welcome to another All Celebrity Special, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Where more famous faces are here to put their necks on the block for their favourite charities. Some shows have celebrities facing live snakes, tarantulas and rats, but the guests tell me that facing me is much more scary. <laughs> I'm sure I take that. Please welcome our first brave pair, risking all for their chosen charities, comedy actors Jessica Hines and Stephen Mangan. <laughs> Right, hoping to raise money for the NCH, the National Children's Home tonight, is the artiste formerly known as Jessica Stevenson, now working under her married name of Jessica Hines. Jessica was accepted into the National Youth Theatre at the age of 15, but came to national fame through her roles in Channel 4's quirky comedy Spaced and playing the seemingly always hungry next-door neighbour, Gerald, <laughs> in The Royal Family. Recently, she was seen in the British comedy film Confetti, acting alongside her millionaire partner tonight, Stephen Mangan. Stephen is here playing for Marie Curie Cancer Care. After studying at RADA, Stephen worked in the theatre, performing the classics, before landing the TV role of the adult Adrian Mole in Adrian Mole, The Cappuccino Years. <laughs> but Stephen is probably best known for playing the lust-crazed Dr Guy Secretan in the surreal comedy series is Green Wing. Right, lots to chat about, but at this moment, Jessica and Stephen are just 12 little questions away from winning a possible £1 million pounds for their favourite causes, thanks to our new Fast Track to a Million. Now, if any of those 12 questions should prove a little sticky, they can hopefully unstick themselves by using their three lifelines, as usual. 50-50, phone a friend, and ask this audience. Now, as always, our celebrity pairs have to agree on all their final answers and the use of any lifelines. OK, you two, lots of luck. Jessica Stephen, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Both looking very calm. I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> right, you are two away from 1,000, but of course, either of these could lead to you going home with absolutely nothing. So take a good look. Question number one is for 500 quid. The word culinary derives from the Latin word for which room? Bedroom. Bathroom. Kitchen. Study. You're grinning. <clears throat> I think it's kitchen. I think it's kitchen as well. It's the right answer. You got 500 quid. <laughs> right, question number two is for £1,000. That will be guaranteed. Here it comes. Which TV programme made its last appearance in July 2006 after 42 years? Panorama. Blue Peter. Newsnight. Top of the Pops. Panorama's still going. Yeah. So it's News, news Night's still going. So it's Top of the Pops then, it's isn't it? It's got to be, isn't it? I think it's Top of the Pops. Yeah. Definitely Top of the Pops. I think it's Top of the Pops. Final answer? Yeah. yeah. It's the right answer. You've got £1,000. <laughs> Tell us a bit about your, well, both your charities. Steve, you're doing uh, Marie Curie, aren't you? Yes. Why, why that one in particular? Um, my, I lost both my parents to cancer, and um, thanks mainly to the Marie Curie nurses who come and look after people mm. uh, when they're terminally ill, uh, both my parents were able to die in their own house, in their own, in their own bed, with all of us there. People that, that love them. Around them, yeah. And also with some dignity, I think. Absolutely, well. and that, you know, is invaluable, so this yeah. is my way of... Putting, Give you know, saying thank you. Okay, bless you. Uh, Jessica, NCH. Um, well, the NCH is, is um, the children's charity, oh. and it's the largest children's charity in the UK. It supports um, children and young people, disabled young people, young carers, homeless children, um, and young people, and people who are coming out of the care system, and sort of builds their confidence and gives them a chance to sort of achieve their full potential and sort of break the cycle of. Um, deprivation really mm -hmm. for them gives them a chance to achieve something and I'm I've chosen this charity because um, my mum was a working single mum and it's very very tough and I think any charity that really supports these vulnerable groups families and children I think mm -hmm. are, are well worth it definitely okay good very good let's try and um, let's try and get as much money as mm -hmm. we possibly can for both of them um, you got a thousand pounds you know that bit that's guaranteed you haven't touched any lifelines have a look at question number three this is for two thousand pounds now uh, you're only ten away from a million what kind of musical instrument is a clarion? Harp, violin, trumpet, drum. 
Steve, are you musical? I, d I do play the... the clarion. clarion. Clarion, yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Four. Clarion. Clarion call. Cla strings, for some reason, I think. Really? Clarion. I... Mm. Um, but you're thinking clarinet? Clarion. I think it's the, like a... Like a... Uh, a bugle. I was going to say, when it, when it came up, I thought bugle. Clarion call, so yeah. So trumpet uh, is, is easily call. the closest to that. The trumpet. I mean, a harp is a bit... Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? But it's mm. a bit tinkly. Apologies to any harp players. <clears throat> and I think, you know, let's... Ooh, yeah. It's so Quite much confident. harder, isn't How it? confident are you, Stephen? It's so How hard confident? when you're up How here, confident? Out of 100, are you sort of 90% confident? About 90%. Yeah. I, I think, I, uh... yeah. Well, let's go with trumpet then. OK. Yeah, I could see why you'd say that. I think trumpet. Yeah. You talked yourself into it, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's OK if you want to play it. It's your call. Final answer, Steve. Yeah. Jessica? Yeah. It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the second part of tonight's Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where comedy actors Jessica Hines and Stephen Mangan are uh, doing rather well. I've got £2,000. I've got all three lifelines so far totally untouched. Where did you two meet? Are you, are you sort of friends, or have you just turned well, up separately? We've worked together yeah, we a lot, worked, haven't we? Yes. You were both in uh, Confetti. Yes, that's right. Although Good we didn't fun. meet much on Confetti, did we? We were kept because... apart. Yeah. It was, it was a film about three couples who were trying to win best wedding of the most original wedding of the year um, and Jessica you were marrying Martin Freeman weren't yep. you? and you were doing a musical wedding and I was a professional tennis player mm. so okay. but the, the, it was all improvised the whole film there's no script at all they improvised mm. the entire thing so over six weeks we actually planned a wedding yeah and had the wedding uh, for the hmm. cameras and um, but we were all very separate won. doing our things we won yeah sure we won but you were trying I mean you were a I'm sure you still are, but you were, you were a proper actor doing Shakespeare. I did, things, that's you? right. What I, Shakespeare did you do? I did, I did loads. Did I you? probably did about 12. Can you quote any? Yeah. <laughs> so on then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> but what is the answer? <laughs> what is the answer? I did questions, you do answer <laughs> Right, listen, you have £2,000. Question number four is for £5,000. Here it comes. The Pierce Brosnan film, Dante's Peak featured what kind of natural disaster? Tornado, volcanic eruption, hurricane, typhoon. Well, the only thing that has a peak out of those four things is a mountain. Yeah. I mean, I don't... Have you seen the film? No, I haven't, but I can remember the poster, and I'm just trying to think of the poster, and I'm trying to think what was in the background. And it was either a, a, a kind of volcano mountain or a kind of tornado shaped that way. I know it was kind of roughly <laughs> triangular, but right. I can't remember really which way it was up. So if I can just think... Hmm. I think... It, I think it was volcanic eruption. Um, I mean, if you get a peak on a mountain, Dante's, you get a peak on a volcano, wouldn't you? And Dante is, Dante's Inferno, which is fire, so it's got to be a volcanic eruption. It's quite nerve-wracking, we don't actually know, but we're going to... Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to guess volcanic eruption. Yeah. Final we, answer. Yeah. It's the right answer, you've got £5,000. Yes. <laughs> you got five grand. you are three away from 50000 That'd be a great result. Uh, you've still got all three lifelines. Question number five... Uh, it used to be for 1,000. Question number five is now for 10,000 pounds. Here it comes. Which Shakespeare? Ah, you see, Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Which Shakespearean character famously demands a pound of flesh? Shylock, Lady Macbeth, Iago, Goneril. You've played him, haven't you? With that nose. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got on with that nose. <laughs> it's Shylock. Yeah. 10,000 pounds. Final answer. Yeah. It is Charlotte. You got ten grand. <laughs> ten 
£10,000 okay. very quickly. Question number six is for £20,000. You can double your money here. I will warn you, it's a big old drop. You would lose £9,000 if you gave me a wrong answer. Take your time, have a look. This is question number six. I have a possible 12. You're halfway. If you get this right, here it comes. Where in Britain was the world's first metal bridge built? Copper Bridge Gorge. Iron Bridge Gorge. Lead Bridge Gorge. Tinbridge Gorge. <laughs> well, um, well, lead, you couldn't build a bridge out of lead, could you? Because it's heavy and s soft and it would just collapse. I mean, copper was the first metal that was mined in, 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 in England. Was it? Yeah. But you couldn't build a no, bridge out of copper. Green, copper, it? although it might look copper, they might cut, you know, they might cover it with copper. And tin would be fairly. Useless, it? Yeah, but it might be called Copper Bridge, but be Iron Bridge. You'd, you'd be pretty daft to build an iron bridge in Lead Bridge, wouldn't you? You wouldn't do Lead that. Lead Bridge. Lead Bridge Gorge, <laughs> Tin Bridge Gorge, Iron Bridge Gorge. It's got to be Iron Bridge, isn't it? Why would it? Why would it not be Iron Bridge? Exactly. Why would it not be? Why would it? Would it? Would it be Copper Bridge? But it might be built somewhere that 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 mined other metals, maybe. It's, Something like that. I don't know. What do you think? I do you think, think? I think we, we're talking ourselves out of it. It's do you think be, it's, it's Iron got Bridge? To be Iron Bridge, isn't it? What, I, I, I think. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Iron Bridge. Yes. Iron you Bridge. So? We're very decisive. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, Iron Bridge, then, will it? <laughs> Iron Bridge. Final answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's the right answer. You got twenty thousand yeah. pounds. Listen, you've got 20 grand. You have got three lifelines to get you up to £50,000. That's the next serious milestone, and you would be guaranteed to go home with at least that amount of winch. Okay. Right, here comes the next question. This is for £50,000. Have a look. The statue known as Winged Victory depicts which Greek goddess? That one outside. Near the, near Psyche. Palace. Athena. Nike. Aphrodite. It's, it's Athena. Athena. Um, you think it's outside? I think the Winged Victory is the statue just at the bottom of Hyde Park, next to Buckingham Palace. The one, the one, the one with the, the, you know, the well, you know, the one, the one with the, you know, the one with the wings. The one with the wings. <laughs> that one. Pretty victorious but one. That the one, wings. you know, the one with the with the chariot and the horses. Just at the bottom of Hyde Park, you know. Um, I think that's that's. I think that's Winged Victory. What was and I Athena? think she's Athena. Who who was? It's supposed. It's supposed. She's a po the, the goddess of posters. A poster. The poster goddess. The goddess of the poster. No, Athena. I don't know what she did. I don't know what she did. Uh, except she was Greek goddess and she had wings. But I, I. But I wouldn't. I mean, I would say I was probably about sixty or seventy percent. Right. What do you think? You think it's Nike, don't you? Well, I don't really have a clue, to be honest. Um... I don't think it's Aphrodite's the goddess of love, and she, you know, and it's she winged victory is is a woman on a horse with a with a. But how do we know? But yeah, it's got to be Athena. The only thing I'm saying, thinking about Nike, is yeah, if you ran a a company that made athletic gear, yeah, sure, the goddess of Winged victory. Winged victory. Sounds like your woman, but I don't even know if Nike's a man or a woman. So that's the only thing I would say about Nike. Nike, Nike is. Are we? We're discounting Psyche and Aphrodite. Yeah, Psyche is obviously the goddess of moaning. Uh, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Goddess With of Psyche, whinging. the goddess of whinging. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, we basically don't definitely know, though, do we? I would say I was about 60 or 70% sure, which is not enough, is it? And I, but I don't know who... I can't think of who I would know would know that. I bet you do, though, don't you, Steve? I know. <laughs> I'd rather run out 50-50 on this. What do you think? But then what if it's Athena and Psyche? Are we definitely going to go for Athena? What if it's Athena and Aphrodite? Then we'll go for Athena. Definitely. Is that agreed? If, if it's you're... Athena and Aphrodite... Yeah, yeah. We will say, yes, we'll go for Athena. OK. 
Is that what we're saying? I think we'll see, we'll see what they do with the 50-50. Because we're losing a lot if we do that. Are we definitely sure it's not Aphrodite? Well, let's see what the 50-50 comes up with. No, but, then... but I think we should make the decision now. Really? Yeah. You'd like to plan ahead? Yes. Because if we're not absolutely sure, then we should say, let's not risk it and go 50-50. Because then if we have to guess again, then that's too risky. I think we should decide... <laughs> <laughs> Can we ask the audience what you just meant? Phone <laughs> <laughs> a friend, what the hell are you talking about? If it's 50 50 on Athena and Aphrodite, are we definitely going to go for Athena? Uh, yeah, you're happy to do that. I'm happy to do that. All right, let's Although go 50 50. Part of me that's going, it's wrong, it's wrong. Let's go 50 50 and see what they say, shall we? But then if we choose Athena and I'm, not, I'm only 6% sure, <laughs> then. I don't know how to begin to help to go. with this. But are we definitely sure it's not Aphrodite? Um, no, I only think it's Nike because it's the, the, the winged victory, the sports, the, the, the tick. Is that like a wing, the tick? No, it's nothing like a wing. A wing? It's, it's like, like a, a tick. It's like a wing. It's like a tick. You've won, tick. A winged victory. And you've got a wing. Nike, winged victory. See, what if it's then Athena and Nike? What are we going to do then? Then, then we'll cry. 50-50, uh, though. 50-50, come but on. But then, won't we just be... I always think with 50-50, you're just exactly where you were before. Not if it's they say... Worse. Not if they say Psyche and Nike. Psyche and Nike, they sound like... They say Psyche and Nike. Should be on EastEnders, don't they? Psyche and Nike. <laughs> OK, 50-50, let's do it. OK. <laughs> Finally, 50 /50. I've made a decision. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Uh, leave Steve and Jessica the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Ooh. It's the EastEnders couple. I think... Psyche and Nike. Psyche and Nike Mitchell. So I think it's not looking too promising now. I think then it's Nike, It's got it? to be, isn't it? OK. <gasps> Thank God you're here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you're here. I'm happy with Nike. OK, yeah. Nike, yeah. You it's... thought it was a feeder. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well... <so. laughs> Final answer, Nike. <laughs> yeah. You just won fifty thousand <laughs> pounds. <laughs> you know, I've no idea how you got there, but <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Have a look. That's what you've done. You go back with at least that amount of money. Nothing can take that away. You've got £50,000. Fantastic. Hopefully you win some more. You've still got two last ones. Have a look. You might as well play the next one. Great situation yep. about this. You can't go wrong on this one. You've got £75,000 yep. to play for. Okay. You've got fifty grand guaranteed. Have a look. This is question number eight of a possible 12. Here it comes. Which of these singers was born Ronald Witcherly? Ronald Witcherly. Billy Fury. Marty Wilde. Tom Jones. Gilbert O'Sullivan. Ronald Witcherly. Now, you can ask the audience, you can find a friend. Not a clue. No idea. No, not Absolutely a clue. Good. no Thank idea. You. Good, neither have I. Not a um, clue. Shall we ask the audience? Although, I do think it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Although. Yeah, it's not Tom Jones? No, I don't think it's Tom Jones, because I think. I just don't think it sounds like it, it would. I, it doesn't sound Welsh to me. I mean, it sounds like a Welsh name. I just. I don't think it's Gilbert O'Sullivan. Although maybe it is. I have no idea. Should we ask the audience? Yes. Yeah. Right, audience, first time we've needed just serious money. This is for 75 grand. This is the question. See what you do. Uh, which of these singers was born Ronald Witcherly? Now, A on your keypads is Billy Fury, B is Marty Wilde. C is Tom Jones, D is Gilbert O. Sullivan. A, B, C or D, all vote now. Ooh. 51% say Billy Fury. It's fairly scattered apart from that. 31% say Gilbert O. Sullivan. You can't lose on this, you've got 50 grand, but obviously it'd be nice to get some more. What do you think? I, I reckon we should go with the audience. OK, fine. Yeah? Yes. OK? OK. Final answer, yeah? Yes. 51% of this audience are absolutely right. You just won 75,000 pounds. Well done, everybody. 51% of 
serious money, guys. Have a look. Fantastic. That will make a huge difference to both your causes, mm. won't it? Mm. Brilliant. 75... You don't want to touch this one? And hold it. I don't. I can't. I don't want to. I mustn't. 75,000. Right, you've got £75,000. How do you feel now? Sort of numb? Elated? Bit yeah, I'm really pleased. Really pleased to got to 50. Really pleased. And another couple of rungs would be well... Yeah. I mean, I've already surpassed our expectations, yeah, I think. Yeah, definitely. So. It's all you did that on question two. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 you still got to phone a friend. Right, this is question number nine. It's worth 100... I can't believe I'm saying this. It's worth £150,000. Here it comes. <clears throat> Which of these countries shares a border with Morocco? Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, Libya... I've been to Morocco. Have you been to Morocco? No. Did you go over the border? Uh, well, it's not Egypt. Egypt's right on the other side of of the country of Africa, of the continent. And it's not Libya, because that's on the north coast but further away. Algeria is massive. Um But I think it's Tunisia, but whether I'm sure about that. I know when you, if you take the ferry over from Spain, you land in a place called Tunis. Right. But I think that's in Morocco. Right. So you think it's Algeria or Tunisia? Yeah. I'm in... I'm... I'm... 80... 3% sure it's Tunisia. <laughs> but I'm not completely positive. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to imagine sort of Morocco and on the map of Africa and it's it's, it's at the top it's the top, top left. Yeah. yeah, right onto Spain. Right onto Spain. And they all, all those countries are along the Mediterranean along the top of Africa. Okay. Egypt on the right, yeah. Morocco on the left. Yeah. And I think it goes Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, Libya. Egypt or something like that. Tunisia, Algeria, Libya. And how it's how does that then border Tunisia with Morocco? Is it? Well, it would be I think if you, you know, if, I mean I thought Algeria but then I know if Morocco's by the sea, I know Tunisia's by the sea. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. And Presumably Algeria is a big country, but... It's massive, yeah. But, um, Morocco comes down the west sort of side of Africa right, there. Right. Northwest corner. So do you think Tunisia would be below it then? Is that what you're... No, I think it, Tunisia would be next to it on the coast. In fact, my wife was filming in Tunisia last year. Right. Was so it I next to know. Morocco? <laughs> That's... I think it was. Yeah. Let's go for it, shall okay. we? Okay. Yeah. You got fifty grand guaranteed, whatever happens. Yeah. You got seventy-five at the moment. Okay. Mm-hmm. And play? Yeah. Yeah. Tunisia. Okay. Final answer. Yeah. You had seventy-five thousand pounds. We'll take a break. Join us again in a couple of minutes for the next part of tonight. Who wants to be a millionaire? Don't go away. Welcome back to the third part of tonight's Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where Jessica Hines and Stephen Mangan are sitting anxiously waiting to find out whether Tunisia was the right answer to this question. Which of these countries shares a border with Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, Libya? They had £75,000. It was worth £150,000. It was the wrong answer. I'm so sorry, Steve, and all your logic was right, except the answer is Algeria. Oh. But you have to say, if I said to you at the beginning of the show you would be leaving with £50,000, you'd be pretty well pleased, wouldn't you? Yeah. Give me a big hand. They still go away. £50,000. Have a look. And this time you can take it. 
£50,000 better off. Well played. Thank you so yes, well done, mate. I'm sorry I wasn't more. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. £50,000, Jessica and Stephen. <laughs> It's still a serious result. Jessica and Stephen go away having raised £50,000 for their two charities. It does mean it's now time to welcome our next couple of celebrities this evening from BBC Breakfast News, Sean Williams and Bill Turnbull. <laughs> Right, both Sean and Bill are here to win as much as they can for Marie Curie Cancer Care. Sean Williams started a 20-year journalistic career in BBC Radio behind the scenes as a producer before becoming a news editor at the launch of BBC News 24. During screen tests for the on-screen team, somebody dropped out, so Sean sat in and was immediately offered a presenting job by the head of news. She hasn't looked back since and is now a BBC News reader and a regular on BBC Breakfast, which she often co-presents alongside Bill Turnbull, who's her millionaire partner this evening. Bill started as a reporter for BBC Television News nearly 20 years ago, during which time he was the BBC's Washington correspondent, reporting on high-profile stories like the Monica Lewinsky scandal and the O.J. Simpson trial. When he's not on screen on BBC News 24 or on BBC Breakfast, he can often be heard on Radio 5 Live. Right. Serious business, and then we chat. Sean and Bill are just 12 questions away from £1 million for Marie Curie Cancer Care. They have three lifelines to help them, but they must agree on every single answer and every decision. Yeah, like they always do. Good luck to them both. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Right. Two questions away from £1,000, but obviously, uh, if you get either of these wrong, you would go home with nothing at all. I'm sure you won't. You have all three lifelines. This is question number one for £500. Which French phrase is often said before a meal? Bon voyage. Bon chance. <laughs> bon appétit. Bon nuit. Well, you might say bon chance, meaning good luck, if it was not a particularly good meal you're looking forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I think we know this one, really, don't we? Yes. Should we cut we, to the Yeah, chance? let's just get them out of the way. I have <laughs> bon appétit. It's the right answer. You've got 500 pounds. <laughs> You so desperately want to get to a thousand, then you get that bit over. It would be nice. Right, question number two is for one thousand pounds. That would be guaranteed. Here it comes. Okay. On which of these items are you most likely to see the word megapixels? Hair dryer, digital camera, microwave oven, digital radio. Digital camera. Digital camera. Final answer. Yes. Yeah. It's the right answer. You have one thousand pounds. <laughs> You're looking terribly pleased with yourself. No, we're no, really we feel not. Sick, actually. Very <laughs> sick. We're so nervous out there. It was sweaty and oh, it's nasty, isn't it? It's horrible. Come on, let's try and get some money for you. Yeah. You've got um, one thousand <laughs> pounds. That's guaranteed. That's good. You are five away from fifty thousand pounds. Question number three is for two thousand pounds. You have all three lifelines. In the Harry Potter books, which article tells the pupils the house they will belong to at Hogwarts? Sorting scarf, sorting glove, sorting hat. Sorting sock. Charles looking very excited. <laughs> oh, oh, me, me. Please, please ask me. Yeah. Sorry, you really know? Yeah. W what is it? Sorting hat. You sure? Yeah. I haven't got the faintest idea. Have you never read one? I read, I read uh, most of the first one. He means no. <laughs> he means he hasn't read it. <laughs> and then I, it all got a bit too exciting for me. So yeah. no. You're making me doubt myself no, now. No, don't doubt yourself. You're with it. Go for it. Yeah, but you know me, I go on gut instinct and sometimes... What are you saying, hat? I'm going to say hat, and I'm confident of hat. Don't be put off then. No, I'm confident of hat, so hat it is. Shall hat we? It is. Do you mind? Nope. Hat. Sorting hat is the right answer. You've got 2,000 pounds. He can take over the other ones now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done three, you've done yeah. your You can do the other nine. OK, question number four is for £5,000. The money goes up pretty steeply these days, but obviously there's a drop here. You would lose £1,000. You're guaranteed £1,000. This will be for £5,000. Have a look. Which bird is traditionally associated with cockneys? Magpie, 
Sparrow. Bullfinch. Robin. It's Cockney Sparrow, the Cockney isn't Sparrow. It? Sparrow. In it. Final answer. Yes. Yes. It's the right answer. Cockney Sparrow. Yeah. Bye, bye, bye. Right, you are three, this is zooming up, you are three away from £50,000. Uh, next question is worth 10000 The important thing is you have not yet touched any lifelines. Did you used to produce him? Yes, not once. very well. Once, once. But it didn't get was off she, the very Was she very start. firm? Well, when but she fair. wasn't on the floor, yes. <laughs> well, there was this, uh, let me rephrase that. Well, you sound like I'm drunk all the She was legless every night. First, night, yeah. first night we had dinner, we had dinner and, and she, she collapsed on the floor. And uh, I had to call an ambulance, called an ambulance yeah. took her to Little Rock General. Anyway, next day she was fine and off we went. How but embarrassing is that, though? Quite funny, I've known though. him for half an hour. Yes. And he was talking to me, and a lot of people do this, you have to say, Bill, just keeled <laughs> over like this. More quickly than that. Yeah. yeah. Bang. Yeah, bang. Bang. And he took me to casualty. Oh, Never looked back, it was the start that of was really that was the start of a beautiful relationship. Oh, it was. Question number five is for ten grand. You have not yet touched 50 50, phone a friend or ask the audience. Have a look. Tell us if you need a lifeline yet. You may not. Which MP is nicknamed the Human Anagram? Michael Fabricant. Anne Cluett. Lembit Opic. Kate Hoey. Well. It's not Michael Fabricant. It's not Michael Fabricant. He's famous for something else. Big hair, I think you're hair. thinking big it's hair. Got wonderful hair. I include, I mean, you, you could jumble the name, the, the letters of her name around, but. And Kate, make? Uh, 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 Kate Hoey's the same sort of thing, but we instinctively both said Lembit Lembit Opic Opic. before the, uh, the answers came up. Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's, and it's I don't just, even know what it makes, even if you try to no, make it into But an he's most likely to have a nickname. I don't yeah. think any, any of those would have a nickname. It's such an extraordinary name. It's up to you. Is it him? Michael yes. Fabricant, Anne Cluid, Lembit Opic, Kate Hoey. Human Anagram. C. We're going to go with Lembit Opic. Lembit Opic. Final answer. Final answer. Yeah, final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £10,000. <laughs> right. £10,000 you have. Question number six would be the halfway mark. And it would be worth £20,000. You're right, Bill. Yeah, I'm fine. Just He's in the zone. Focused. Are you focused? Yeah. You're right, Sean? Yep. Okay. You're focused? Mm. Okay. Right, question number six. <laughs> 20,000 pounds. Have a look. Here it comes. Which darts player won his first world championship in 2004? Bobby George, Andy Fordham, Wayne Mardle, Keith Della. Absolutely. Have you got any idea? I only know Bobby George. I haven't heard of the others. Absolutely no idea. Oh, no. No idea. Bob Bobby George is a darts player, Right. Isn't Are he? the others darts players? I don't know. I haven't heard it. I don't they know who Andy be. Fordham is. Wayne Mardell, Keith Della. Well, we either... I think we've only got a choice of two things to do. We either phone a friend or we ask the audience. I think we should ask the audience. I think we should phone a friend. I think we should ask the audience, actually. Well, hold on a second. Can we back up here and discuss this slightly longer? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Did I jump the gun? No, no well, no more than usual. But <laughs> think about it now. Okay. If we phone a friend, we have a friend lined up who's pretty much going to know the answer. He's no sport. Chris yeah, is going to know. True. Okay? That's true. The audience, lovely people. Absolutely lovely people. Yeah. But when you saw them, when you, as you, you know, made eye contact darts. with each and every one, did you think, I gosh, darts. these people know their darts? <laughs> That's the difficulty. If you, if we use a life and ring, phone a friend, we know we're going to get the answer. Well, I, I thought there's going to be big trouble later. Or, <laughs> uh, the, I, I'm not. What happens if we come back and we get, you know, four twenty fives yeah, on okay. the, the phone I'd, on well, the? 50 /50. I mean, there's no point going fifty-fifty, is there? Really? No, because you don't know any of them. Idea. Phone a friend. Please, let's phone a friend. I'll tell you why. How many more sports questions are going to come up? You're pleading, aren't you? Ish. OK. <laughs> Should we phone a friend? I think if he pleads. Who's Chris? That little short bloke you have? Yeah, that, yeah. Tiny little chap. Yes. Sports bloke. Yes. I know him. 
He knows he, his stuff. Did he do the triathlon? He did. He did, he did the cycling leg, actually. He did it very well. Yeah, he's Sorry, good. Are you, are you, are you... I'm not querying it. I just had a little tiny kind of... He does no darts. I mean, I know he's our sport. He does no darts. You better know his darts. Okay. Right, we'll phone him. Bill, you talk to him. 30 seconds. Hopefully he'll give you the right answer. Um, if not, you have still got two other lifelines. See where you go. It's worth £20,000, so it's serious money. You would lose £9,000 if you did give me a wrong answer. Hello? Chris? Yes? It's Chris Tarrant here. How are you? Oh, very well indeed. Thank you very much. How you can work with those people every morning, I don't know. <laughs> it must Carl be and awful. Bill are lovely. Don't say anything against them. Well, they're here now. Oh, hi, Bill. Hi, Sean. Hi, hi Chris. Chris. They're absolutely petrified, but they do say, Christopher, that they've got a question they're stuck on and you'll know the answer. You must be pretty desperate, you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's for £20,000, so it's serious money. Oh, my goodness. I know. <laughs> Just put a bit of extra pressure on you. So, listen, the next uh, voice here will be Bill's. Yep. And he'll tell you the question. There's still four possible answers. One of them is for £20,000. All right, mate? OK. OK, right, Bill, lots of luck. 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Chris, which darts player won his first World Championship in 2004? Bobby George, Andy Fordham, Wayne Mardell, or Keith Deller? Can you repeat those? Which darts player won his first World Championship in 2004? Bobby George, Andy Fordham, Wayne Mardell, or Keith Deller? You've got uh, ten seconds. My feeling is it's Andy Fordham. Are you sure? Uh, I'm pretty much three-quarters to nine-tenths sure. OK, thanks, mate. OK, mate, bye. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck! Three-quarters to nine-tenths. He said three-quarters to nine-tenths. <laughs> he said Andy Fordham. Yeah, he? he did, he did, yeah. How are you feeling about that? I think, think? I, I, I would go with that. I trust If it, only I because should. it gives us someone else to blame. <laughs> <laughs> Nine tenths is 90%. That's pretty good, let's isn't it? Let's do it. I think so. Let's go. Let's, let's oh, go. Let's go with Andy Ford. Let's go with Andy Ford. Right, final answer. Final answer. <laughs> he had £10,000. He could have asked the audience, which is what Sean suggested. <gasps> you just won £20,000. <gasps> Your face. Your face was amazing. <laughs> Your face was fantastic. Uh, oh. Right. Oh, this was, uh, can I say that was not nice? <laughs> can I say? Well, you reach forward, you got a piece of paper. Oh, he's going to give us the check for a thousand pounds. You could have won this, and then you know it wasn't. That's not a pleasant way. To we do could this. still. It's not a pleasant way, but it brings me a kind of buzz. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's done for nine years. Right, they are one away from £50,000, which is the next serious milestone. They have two lifelines still, they still haven't asked this audience, and they still have a 50-50. They're one away from fifty grand. we will take a break, then go away. Welcome out of the fourth part of tonight's Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where BBC Breakfast, Bill Turnbull and Sean Williams are beginning to feel the pressure a bit. But uh, doing rather well, they're already up to £20,000. They still have two lifelines untouched, and £50,000 is just one right answer away. OK, right, eyes down. Question number seven, if you go for it and give me a right answer, would guarantee you're going home with at least £50,000 for Marie Curie Cancer Care. You can use both lifelines on this question, and if you're still not happy, you can walk away £20,000 better off. Yeah. If you give me a wrong answer at this point, you would lose £19,000. So have a good look. Question number seven of a possible 12 is this. Which US actress married David Arquette in 1999? Sean thinks she knows. Who do you want to see come up on the screen? Courtney Cox. OK, wait and see. Courtney Cox! <laughs> Deborah Messing. Heather Locklear, Roseanne Barr. Are you yeah. sure, 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 sure you're right? Yeah. If you're wrong, you lose 19 grand. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I think it's a very good answer. <laughs> Let's do it then. Final answer. Yeah. You've just won 50,000. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, Whatever happens, you two, you go away with at least that amount of money. Have a look, Sean. It's yours. It's what you've won. You will go home with at least 
that amount of money. Fantastic. Okay. Want to take it? Want to take it off? Don't touch it. No, I'm, no. You got 50 Bill's told me that we... You don't touch the don't, trophy. Don't touch it, don't he touch said. Don't trophy. touch the cheque. You don't? Okay. No. So I'll put it there. Well, whatever happens, you go home with that amount of money. Okay. Now, this is serious business. You got a 50-50. You can ask the audience. You are five away from one million. Oh. You might as well play the next one. You can't lose on it. You've got £50,000 guaranteed, at least, as your take-home tonight. Question number eight is for £75,000. Here it comes. Which of these Asian cities lies closest to the Khyber Pass? Mecca, Shanghai, Peshawar, Calcutta. The Khyber Pass is between India, India. and Pakistan. So, so Peshawar. Or, or Calcutta. Calcutta. Knockout. It's definitely not Mecca. And it's not Shanghai. Not Shanghai. Because it's China. Do you know, I would go, well. If it was you, you'd go with what? Peshawar feels right, but I, but I don't really want to risk it. Well, uh, my gut instinct tells me Peshawar too. Does it? But I, I'm not sure about risking it. If we go 50 50 then it means we have one lifeline left right. thereafter to get us through four questions, potentially. <gasps> if we take a punt, we've got two left. <gasps> but if we take a punt, we could be completely wrong. I know what you're feeling. Your feeling is to go with Bashara, isn't it? I don't know. What do you think? You tell me what you think. Why does Peshawar feel just because it's got to be like Pakistan? Because it's in Pakistan. Isn't it? Yeah. It is. Why do we do this? I don't know. I don't so what's silly. happening to us? We should be saying Pakistan. We should be saying Peshawar. We should be saying Peshawar. Mecca, Shanghai. No. Peshawar, Calcutta. Closest to the Khyber Pass. Should we do 50 50? Then we can't blame ourselves, can we? OK. Or. No, 50-50. 50-50. So that's your decision? 50-50? Yeah. Right, computer take away two random wrong answers. Leave Bill and Sean the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Peshawar. Peshawar. Final answer. Oh. Not Shanghai. No. No. Final answer. Final answer. You just won £75,000. <laughs>